internal strategy analysis aims at identifying and analyzing the sources of companies' competitive advantage. A methodological tool to support such process is the so-called value chain model. The value chain model, proposed by Michael Porter from Harvard Business School in his 1985 book Competitive Advantage, is based on the idea that we cannot analyze competitive differentials if we consider the company in an aggregated way, as a black box, separated by the company's customers and suppliers. What we have to do is to break up the company into single activities or sub-activities, contributing to the process of transformation of inputs like raw materials or know-how into outputs, that is, products or services. The value chain model offers a fine-grained representation of all the activities carried out within the company, and also of internal and external links among the activities themselves. The idea at the basis of it is that the strengths and weaknesses of a company are linked to the way the value chain is designed, structured, and run. More specifically, the model tries to identify the differentials of cost and value through an analysis that considers three levels. First, the way single activities are designed and carried out. Second, the links between the internal activities and such internal activities with those of the customers and suppliers. And third, the overall system of activities, also called level of vertical integration. The original value chain model developed by Porter for manufacturing companies is shown in this figure. The value chain is made up of five basic activities called primary activities and of four cross-cutting activities called support activities. Primary activities are those directly contributing to the transformation of inputs into outputs and to the creation of a value perceived by the client. More in detail, among primary activities we have inbound logistics, that is, the activities associated to the receiving, storing, transporting, and delivering the inputs used in the transformation process, operations, that is, the activities leading to the transformation of inputs into finished products or services, outbound logistics, that is, activities required to store the finished product and physically distribute it to customers, marketing and sales, that is, all those activities aimed at informing the customer about the product so that the customer will then buy it through advertising, promotion, managing of selling channels, and so on. And finally, pre- and after-sales service, that is, installation, technical assistance, provision of spare parts, and so on. Support activities, conversely, have no direct impact on the transformation of inputs into outputs or on the creation of the value perceived by the client, but they represent cross-cutting and enabling processes needed to constantly carry out primary activities. They provide the inputs, human resources, technologies, and other functions. Among these activities, the model highlights procurement, that is, every activity linked to input acquisition like raw material, components, machines, technologies, and services needed for the good functioning of the company, like supplier selection, negotiation, and rating. A second activity refers to managing human resources in terms of scouting, selection, hiring, training, appraisal, and empowerment of personnel. A third support activity is the research and development related to technology development, engineering, and the management of the company's technological portfolio. Finally, the model considers those infrastructural activities that constitute the company's backbone, 
like management, administration, strategic planning, finance, legal services, but also activities which might look less relevant, like managing of the company's canteen. As anticipated, acquired inputs brought into the company thanks to inbound logistics go through the transformation process activities and are turned into a final output, either physical or intangible. If we want to show this process in a general way through a graph, we can take a generic value chain where we identify primary activities at its basis and the cross-cutting or support activities at the top. We associate to this generic value chain the positive quadrant of a Cartesian coordinate system. We mark on the x-axis the time factor, so that we take into account the input passing through the chain activities. On the y-axis, we mark on the one side the cost factor, on the other side the value factor. Now, through the graph, we can underline the fact that as the input goes through the different activities starting from the cost of buying raw materials, it increasingly includes a growing set of costs. Logistic, production, marketing and selling cost, serving cost, and cost linked to cross-cutting activities. At the same time, though, Activities play a role in increasing the value of input. What happens is that activities have a role in creating value and are therefore called value-added activities. At the end of the transformation of inputs into outputs, there will be an output whose value will be higher than the cost. The delta that is created in the difference between cost and value is actually the margin. This is how performance, driven by its determinants of cost and value, builds up as we move along the company's value chain.